Hey everybody and welcome back inside the mind of Matt. In this episode I'm going to be talking about the 3D printer that I've had for 30 days. Got it for Christmas and over the course of the 30 days I've uh, learned some things, I've done some things, uh, upgraded some things, bought some things, uh, and I'd like to talk to you about what I've done and maybe if you can find something useful in that information and you'll have some success with your 3D printer like I've had. So stay tuned for this episode and we're gonna cover a bunch of things. So, you're thinking about or you got yourself a 3D printer. Well, this is uh, kind of uh, what I had to go through and I'm um, sharing it with you and maybe you'll get some insight. So first and foremost, other than having opposable thumbs and a brain, you're going to need some patience when it comes to 3D printing. Because if you're getting into this and you're thinking that you're going to, you know, put something together or you're going to buy something and you're going to throw some filament in it and it's just going to start printing and you're going to have like flawless prints from the get-go, you're wrong. This thing, especially if you get a DIY kit like I did, I put this together and this is a, my ANAT A8. And it's a Prusa i3 clone. Um, if you get one like this, first it's going to take you time to put it together. Second, it's going to take you uh, time to calibrate it and learn about some of the different settings and what you're going to have to do to, you know, to get a, a good print out. And uh, what I'd like to do is talk to you and show you a couple of the tools that I've gotten um, to start with the tools. So. I, I did make a little bit of a, a toolbox, tool chest, tool rack, however you want to call it. And this is it. I got it screwed right to the side of my box. And uh, I'm going to talk about a couple of these things that you're going to need. And uh, go from there. So, first and foremost, the Allen wrenches that come with, you know, most of your kits are just straight Allen wrenches. I've seen these guys in videos struggling with Allen wrenches and stuff. Go out and get yourself a set of handled Allens. Okay, I got these at a hobby shop a while back and it just happened to be very convenient for this situation because everything's metric. I got a two, a two and a half, and a three. Great things to have. Second, uh, this is going to come with it. Y your printer. These are invaluable. The flush cutters. Get yourself a good pair of tweezers. And make sure you got yourself a caliber. Those are just the basic tools you're going to be needing for tweaking, um, processing uh, your prints, cutting off, uh, you know, some of your support materials and rafts and whatever, cutting the, the end of your filament in order to be able to get it in stuff like that so these are some of the most important tools and then also you know you're going to need yourself you know a spatula of some sort you know i got a razor knife but something to be able to get your print off your bed all right so next what you're going to need is software um one you're going to need you know a design software uh you're going to need a slicer and those are the two most important there is a third thing that you can get and if you get this i'm gonna highly suggest that you do um so first uh for me i'm using um one two three design um it's a free software it works great for me i've been able to create lots of different things with that software uh, easily create an STL file which is importable into my slicer which I use Cura um, using the 2.3.1 the newest version and so far everything's worked out great for me now the third thing I'm going to suggest for you to get it's going to also require some extra hardware um, and that's going to be for you to get a Raspberry Pi um, and me I'm using Octoprint on my Raspberry Pi and I'll tell you what it's uh, just taking everything for me to the next level of printing um, not only um, at first I had a bunch of cameras set up um, that I could view with some 
uh, iOS software or apps and stuff like that. But I couldn't do anything, <coughs> excuse me, other than just see what was printing. With the Octoprint, not only can I see what's happening, but um, I can change settings um, from anywhere that I have an internet access right from my smartphone. Um, I can start a print, stop a print. Um, uh, today, take for example, uh, my girlfriend called while I was at work and said the print was done. Um, and she took it off the printer bed and I was at work and I pulled out my phone and I started up another print. So get yourself an Octoprint or get yourself an, uh, a Raspberry Pi that is with uh, Octoprint on it. So those are the software side of it and um, my suggestion was if you don't have your printer yet, uh, do what I do did and and I just sat down on the computer I uh, installed the the software and I just got familiar with it worked myself through a couple of, of designs and stuff and of course I couldn't print anything up but I, I was familiar enough with the software that once I did get my printer I was able to design something and print it out so the next thing that I'm gonna suggest um, is your first prints um, once you get your printer up and running and it's you know you get your bed leveled and your nozzle set to the right you know height above your bed and and I'm just throwing this out there when you think that it's close enough it's not close enough this 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 is very close you know less than less than a half of a millimeter is what you're gonna want your nozzle above your bed so you get your printer working you want to print something this is going to be my first suggestion four things four things to print first thing bed leveling knobs okay this printer comes with uh, butterflies nuts and you know this this screw is actually threaded right into this H bracket um, and in order to make any type of adjustment you need to put a screwdriver in the top and then move the butterfly up and down and go around the corners and multiple times you're gonna want to go through and, and you know get this thing level with these things it's just that much easier to, to get at and to level second thing your z-axis uh, limit switch stock will be mounted in this area right here in order to get at it you got to loosen up two screws move it up move it down not very convenient not very easy to get you know my new adjustments so I'd print yourself this is the style that I've chose there are multiple styles that you can find on Thingiverse or on any other website that has those kind of things but print yourself this that way you can make much easier adjustments with your z-axis and the last uh, is actually two things um, that are the same but different places. This is the y-axis tensioner. All right, you're definitely going to want to print that, and then your your x-axis belt tensioner. Um, stock. It's just pretty much you set it up as tight as you can you tighten it down and and you hope for the best so by printing these out i can actually adjust each one of them on the fly and then uh also if you're uh gonna be doing that you might as well print out this guy right here as well and it just makes putting your uh your belt around your uh your axis a whole lot better so if you're going to be printing the, the tensioner, you can print that too, and then you can do it all at one time. So, a couple of the other things that I have done with this is I, I, I made a bracket for the front, made a bracket for the back, um, made me a filament guide, a couple of the little acrylic knob or kind of like plates that cover your, your rods. And I, I printed those guys out just cosmetic wise. You know, I got me a bevel around my LCD and, and around the buttons and stuff. But once you get the Octoprint and your Raspberry Pi connected, the only thing that I've had to use this display for is to disable all my 
uh, stepper motors when I'm doing a calibration but at this point I've got my calibration so nice that I literally just push the button and it prints so but this is my a net and um, I guess we're gonna close out this episode with a little bit of a print uh, I got me a, a fresh box of filament and it's gonna be in the color of Flip it around. Where is it? There it is. Gold. All right, so we're gonna get this out. We're gonna load it up, and we're gonna make ourselves a print. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, if you uh, do end up getting an A net A8, um, there's an awesome support group on Facebook that you can join. Um, Throughout the day, there's all kinds of questions and answers and people having problems and other people who have worked through that problem helping each other out. So definitely check out that if you're going to go. And if you don't get an ANET, I know that there's support groups for all makes and models of uh, 3D printers out there. So get yourself you know, on a support group and if you do have problems, it's just that much easier to help uh, solve them with a network of people that have are going through exactly what you're going through so anywho we're going to load up some gold filament and i got a nice print selected and uh or a, a nice model selected for a, a gold application and now uh, we're going to print so enjoy and don't forget to hit that subscribe button hit that like button uh make some comments for some content that you might want to see some prints or some colors um and uh, I got something coming in the mail. I was hoping it was going to come in the mail for this video, but it's just going to give me an opportunity to make another uh, kind of segment, you know, a monthly segment. So, anywho, we're going to get this thing loaded up. All right, thanks. Ooh, nice and vacuum sealed.
this thing back down. Look at how pretty she is. And that's how easy it is when you got your bed right and you let it cool. If you like this print don't forget to like this video keep coming back inside the mind of Matt